Today we're going to talk about Universal Audio's Luna. In my last video, I did a top five free DAWs for Mac and Luna made the cut. So today I'm going to give you an overview of Luna and I'm going to tell you my thoughts on it and what I think about this software. Full disclosure, I'm a Pro Tools user. I've been using Pro Tools for, oh shit, for over 25 years. But recently my eyes have been wandering because I am sick of the subscription and this is something that's very appealing to me, so I'm really excited to dive in and check out Luna. So here we go. When you first fire up Luna, you're gonna see this screen here. This is your file management window. And we've seen this in all other DAWs, which is very familiar. I'll just give you a quick rundown on how this works. On the side here you have, you can create a new session. The discover will take you to a section where you can explore and see what's available for purchase. So if you wanna upgrade some plugins, or in this case, you can get the waterfall B3 organ. Uh, your manage window. So this is like if you wanna manage your plugins, or in my case, if I wanna go ahead and purchase uh, Luna Pro, which is something I'm, I'll talk about briefly. I can do that all in this section, um, but just basically managing my plugins uh, and then settings. So this is like your your preference window section. So like you can you know adjust your hardware. Um, this is really cool because if I had an Apollo unit, I can still use my my Focusrite, but I could also add something else if I wanted to. Um, in this case, so if you have multiple interfaces, you can turn that on. But in this case, we're just going to leave it at that. Input settings. So. It's a very standard input and output. You don't have the insert management yet um, that you see in Pro Tools. So if you use a lot of like outboard gear, um, that might be something in the future that they'll be incorporating into Luna, but it's not there yet. So something to think about if you are thinking of like incorporating a lot of outboard gear, they don't really have that insert section yet, that functionality. So just keep that in mind. I'm using the controllers for my euphonics i have a an avid artist mix hooked up right now to see how that works i'm going to talk about that a little bit later but if that's something that you're using a lot of controllers then this is where you would set that up we'll go back to the create section uh so here very standard you can create your name work from templates you have a tempo section this kind of threw me off uh, so let's say i want to set my tempo at 130. i'm a pro tools user i have the habit of hitting enter it creates the session automatically which is kind of something I'm not a fan of, but if I was to go back, let's go new, we'll call this test, um, 130, we'll leave it. Uh, I can change my time signature. I can tap my tempo, which is handy. If I want to set my section, my location, and then where everything's saved here. Uh, in this case, we're just going to open this like this. And this is going to bring you to our first window, our first workflow window, if you will. So when you open up a session, there's a lot on the page. I know a lot of Pro Tools users that really like having everything on one window. I always liked having a very minimal, clean edit screen. And then if I did any like mixing or routing, I would actually use the mixing window. That's how I tend to work. But I know a lot of people that would love this. One thing I find with this is that things are kind of hard to see. And I don't know if it's just because I'm getting older or they're cramming a lot of stuff here. Um, but they did give a solution for that. So up in this section under view, you can change uh, what we see on this window. So in this case, um, if I wanna get rid of the track section, I can just click track, get rid of that. Focus, focus is an emulation of the channel strip. So we'll talk about that in a sec, but if I wanna get rid of it, I can just get rid of focus. Info, which is this thing at the bottom, which is cool if you were like to flip back and forth between like, audio core, let's say I want to go to Apollo. There's a reason why you might want to do that if you're using some of their Unison plugins. They want to use like some uh, some of their emulated preamps. Um, you can switch back and forth. Uh, sample rate, you can change your buffer rate if you're going from like a tracking session to a mixing session. Um, but if we don't need it, let's get rid of it. So we can just go up here, get rid of info. And then monitoring, which is this section right here. Um, yeah, I don't need it there either. So I'm just going to start off with very simple like that, okay? So that's what the view section does. So even though it starts off with everything open, um, you can clean it up if you want. Uh, your BPM section, your clock section, uh, your counter, very standard transport stuff. We see this a lot in Pro Tools. Um, Logic has it as well. But yeah, I think it's actually very nicely organized. So depending on which workflow I'm working on, so for example, let's say I'm recording, I can set it and it basically keeps the edit window, but it adds some extra extra information on the top. So this is kind of cool. So if I want to set up my pre-roll or anything like that, I can do that all here, post-roll. Um, if I'm working MIDI, again, um, it just gives me some extra parameters I can play with at the top. Uh, this is my edit workflow. So here, if I'm doing a lot of cutting and editing, um, I have all these options here, crossfade, 
all that stuff, right? Which is kind of cool. It's designed really well and really efficient, right? If I ever need to go back, three dots. I can go back and uh, reopen something or change something if I want to, but we're just gonna go back to that window for now. So that's kind of cool. And here we have like our global settings and they did a really good job at giving me options if I wanna show less or more, right? So if I hit these three dots here, it sh just gives me a checklist of what I wanna show. So in this case, let's say I wanna get rid of signature and tempo, I just click it. So it even frees up more space, which is really nice. So this is where I think universal audio is really smart. I feel that they're really focused on who their user is. They know who their end user is gonna be. And I can really feel that they're really targeting that Pro Tools, um, loving analog kind of user. And the reason why I say that is all the short keys are the same as Pro Tools pretty much. So if I wanna create a new track, Command Shift N, they create this new track window. I can also go up here and track, create new track if I want. So this gives me a lot of information. Um, just like when you start in Pro Tools, you get that, you get your tr new track pop-up that you can like set your parameters. In this case, we're making an audio track. Let's say we wanna make like three of them. We want the mono. Um, let's name this, I don't know, acoustic. What happens if I set three and I just say acoustic? It's creating the tracks. Interesting. So that just kind of took a loop. I had four tracks, it's just saying acoustic, and then it's just iterating one, two, three, four. Um, don't know how I feel about that because what if I wanted to like say, let's try that again. Okay, new track, command shift N. Okay, so I can create the new track there. So I want to create new tracks um, within the group of track that I want to do. So in this case, I made four tracks named acoustic. But if let's say I want to do drum tracks as well, so I'm going to go drums and let's make this eight, block it 10. And we'll say bass. All right, that makes sense. If you want a color code, which is a good file management thing to do. Let's say I want my acoustic tracks to be, I don't know, purple. I can just highlight them, click on this. Purple, there you go. Uh, if you're a fan of grouping, Command G. Uh, maybe I gotta close this first. Oh, there it is. And it's called this acoustic. And now, they're all grouped together. So again, because I'm a Pro Tools user and I have experience with short keys, I have had no problems yet jumping into this. Even though I have a 27 inch monitor, I still feel that some of the smaller elements of the screen is kind of tricky to grab. For example, this fader here, I don't know if I would want it bigger, like I can grab it, no problem, but uh, let's see, I want to open up, we'll go focus. And now you can see here, for example, I have this API section. Things are kind of, it's, like, you see what I'm saying? Like these switches kind of seem a little tight. Now, if I wanna, if I wanna expand it, I can, so I can see things a little bit easier, which is nice, but it's still kind of, it's still kind of hard. Anyways, what's really cool about Luna is the workflow. And what I mean is there's probably gonna be some gain stages happening before you end up going into your computer or onto your tape machine. So a very common thing, for example, you're probably gonna to wanna to use like a preamp and a compressor going into like a mixing console, and then that's gonna to go to your tape machine or that's gonna to go to your computer depending on what you like, right? But that's a very common practice. I like to use colorful preamps and compressors going into my recording. Um, and that way I get the sound that I want off the bat and then I don't have to worry about it in post. But if you're coming from the frame of mind where you wanna have things as clean as possible, then you can turn all this stuff off as well and you don't have to worry about it, which is totally cool too. It all depends on your workflow and what you're doing. So let me talk about how they have it set up. So this first section is this input section. Um, I'm actually gonna switch it over to the mix window so you can see what I mean. So this is the mixing window. Again, I like having a big mixing window. I'm not a fan of the Logic small window and I know you can make it bigger and all that stuff, but um, I just like to have my own window for mixing. So you have your input section. So in my case, because I'm using Core Audio, it's just whatever the inputs are from my, my interface. So in this case, I have eight inputs and then I have a secondary interface for 
eight eight ad inputs, and then I have like my auxiliary inputs that I can use here, and it's all mapped out here. So I can select my input the way I want right off the bat. I know it's coming in. Um, utility. This is all stuff that I believe would be coming from the console app. So if you're running Apollo, I believe this is stuff that will become available to you when you turn that on. One of the things that's kind of cool is if you use one of their preamp emulators, you can bake that stuff right in as if you're using a real piece of analog gear. So for example, if you're recording a bass, you can put uh, like a an Ampeg in this chain and run it through a 1073, and then that's the signal that's gonna be baked into your recording. Um, you can't undo it. So if you like to work that way, if you know the sound you're going for and you, you are a fan of committing to your sound, then go for it. Um, but yeah, you can do that here. Now, unfortunately, I can't do that because I'm using a Focusrite interface, not a uh, Apollo. So, Universal Audio, if you are watching this and you want to send me um, something to try out, I am totally for it. So this is kind of interesting. This section is emulating the playback from a tape machine. So you can have it set to different tape machines. In this case, I'll open it up here. Uh, this is the demo. I don't have the Pro yet. Um, I believe it defaults with this Oxide uh, tape machine that you can have everything run through. Um, and there's a bunch of cool default settings that you can play with. So you can do your global settings of your tape machine here. But um, you can go in here and dial in your saturation and what you like. And you can see because they're grouped, they're working together. But let's just say you don't want to have any tape saturation coming. You want to keep it as clean as possible because it's something that you want to mess around with later. Um, you also could put it in your insert, insert section down here. In this case, I just put that plug in um, in the insert section so you can put it there as well. And I believe if you open up this way, you, just, you do have a little bit of um, extra control that you want to do that. But if you don't, who cares? This next section is the console section. So this is emulating an API console. If I go here, I think I have other options. Remove. What else we got? So you can do uh, the API vision. This here would be what we see here. And the other option we would have would be, I think it's a, a API 2500. The other option, yeah, API 2500. So um, we have that, which is kind of nice too, which is just like your compressor that you can run it through if you wanted to do that. In this case, we'll just remove it. Do I have to remove it? I can't just switch it. That's interesting. So it looks like I have to remove it and then switch it. So the console view is just basically what you would see in an API console. You have your input section, which is your preamp. I believe if you are um, using the hardware, you get a, a 512, your dynamics control right here. So if you want to add a gate, you want to set your threshold, it's all here. Um, and then you have, of course, your EQ. And then you have your different controls and how you want to do that. You can change the type. So if you want to go between like a 560 or a 550, you can. Um, as we move down the section, now we have our inserts. So, um, like I was showing you before, you can add your effects. Um, so let's say I want to add a reverb. I'll just click down here, Universal Audio. Uh, what's this one? Oh, cool. Um, again, I don't have the hardware. Don't have access to it. So this is a plugin that's part of the Luna Pro bundle. Right now, I'm doing the trial period. I think you get it when you download Luna, you'll get it for like 30 days, but then after that it expires. So there's like this, there's a couple um, synths, there is the the Studer. I think there's another tape emulator as well. Um, I'm not totally sure of what the list is, but the whole bundle is an extra $256 American. So, and I think it would be worthwhile to get if you're serious about using Luna, uh, just because like a lot of the key features that I'm using now are based on that bundle. So I'm really curious to see how much of a difference it would affect the workflow. I can see losing those extensions actually being kind of an, a pain. Something to think about if you are deciding to switch to Luna, then even though this is free, some of those extensions are not free. And in fact, I think some of them are kind of important. So anyways, um, the next section is the sends. Again, you can send it as you would do in any other DAW, whether it's Logic or Pro Tools. You can create buses, you can send it to an effect send return, however you want to work. Um, creating that stuff is super easy. So if I want to create a master, shift N, um, let's just create a, a bus and we'll call this acoustic uh, big master. And then here I can set up now. And the nice thing is it kind of sets up the track for me. So now if I want to go to my sends, I'm just going to send acoustic master. It's right there. I don't have to do any extra routing. It already knows the bus. It sets that up here. You have your standard send controls. Uh, so depending on how much I want to send the signal, a mute. Um, this is probably my pre and post I'm assuming. And then here's my input. Now this is something that's very cool with Luna is their 
summing feature. So you can actually emulate like a Neve, I think it's like a, a Neve like 80 console, um, but you can also switch that to API if you want as well. Uh, so if you want to get some extra analog goodness, this is something that'll be really interesting to you. Now I mentioned this before that I'm using uh, an artist mix series. These are two uh, controllers that I got pretty cheap like four years ago and by then they were already like discontinued and not um, really supported anymore by Pro Tools. Um, so yeah, they still work with Pro Tools. I haven't had any issues with Pro Tools yet. So, but Luna's a little bit different. Luna um, doesn't have direct access to EU control. It uses an emulator, I believe. I am noticing the... F it's not really workable. Again, if this isn't even supported by Pro Tools, I can't expect Universal Audio to be like, we're gonna make it compatible with this stuff because that's just a waste of time. Yeah, something to think about if you have some older gear that you wanna hook up, you might have some issues and you might have to do some troubleshooting. Like, I just turn this off whenever I use Luna for now and I'm kind of curious to see what other controllers there are on the market that um, would be really compatible with this. Now, something to keep in mind when you're using this, even though it's free right now, there is a lot of extension markups. So Pro Tools will cost you, like if you're doing the Pro Tools Studio, you can either buy it outright for 700, I think seven or 800, or you can pay like your subscription. I think it's like 400 Canadian a year or something like that, which is pretty pricey. You have to kind of keep in mind too that there are gonna be upsells with Universal Audio. So for example, if you want to use the Unison preamps and you want to get like their, Neve 1073 preamp emulation, then you have to buy their hardware. And so that's kind of putting you farther in the universal audio ecosystem. Also the extensions, there's a lot of really cool extensions and the plugins are pretty pricey. So you can probably easily blow, you know, a few hundred to a thousand dollars just on software in the first year, two years of owning Luna. If you're a fan of busy screens and small buttons, then you're gonna like Luna. That's something that I am experiencing right now where um, I feel I'm going to need a bigger monitor, just more real estate and just kind of being able to see things a little bit easier, especially when I start looking at the console in this, in this view. Now, as of the last update, I believe now your inserts or your plugins that you use do support multiple outputs. It's kind of a big deal if you like using like, um, some kind of drum machine emulator when you, where you want to export to multiple tracks. I think that is in the new update. So I think that has been covered. Um, I haven't played around with it yet, but I know that was a concern online. Some people were talking about it. And one of the biggest things that I see that I'm sure is coming down the pipeline is going to be uh, managing your um, outboard inserts. So if you like to run as an insert outboard gear and have it managed in your DAW, it's not available yet. Um, but I'm sure that's coming down the pipeline. And that's the other thing I have to say, this software has been solid. I haven't had any crashes. No issues, no glitches. Speaking of which, if you have any issues, there's a feedback button right at the top. With all that said, I have to say that this is the first inspiring DAW that I've had in a long time. Pro Tools, you know, I've used it for so long. I love Pro Tools. When I fire up a session, I'm not excited to work in Pro Tools. I'm excited to record music, but I'm not excited to be, oh wow, I'm in Pro Tools. This is different. Maybe it's because it's new, but I'm excited to fire up a session and play with Luna. Like, and that's something. That's something.